Our next speaker is Ray Bryant. Ray Bryant works at uh, the ARS facility, the Pasture Lab at uh, Penn State at University Park. Ray is a great colleague and um, does a lot of, of very good things. His topic in this paper, he was the lead author on our poultry paper, and we'll learn more about manure sheds from the poultry industry aspect. I'm Ray Bryant with the USDA Agriculture Research Service at the Pasture Systems and Watershed Management Research Unit. We are located on Penn State campus at University Park, Pennsylvania. Today I'll be talking about poultry manure sheds with a focus on the southeastern U.S., which produces more than 50% of poultry products in the U.S. I would like to recognize my co-authors who are from USDA and Penn State University. This work is a product of the Long-Term Agroecosystem Research Network. Previous speakers have defined manure sheds, but I will be focusing on the environmental sustainability of manure sheds in the southeast. Manure shed management becomes challenging as livestock and poultry production becomes ever more specialized and concentrated. Concentrated feeding operations, such as a 10,000 cow dairy in Idaho and large swine barns in North Carolina import nutrients, primarily nitrogen and phosphorus, in the form of animal feed and concentrate these nutrients as excreted manure. On the Delmarva Peninsula, poultry has evolved to what we refer to as zero acre poultry farms. The owners of the poultry facility own only the land on which the poultry houses are built. They do not own land that can be used for spreading manure produced by the facility. Before we get into manure management, let's take a look at the poultry industry. These numbers are for total U.S. production, but they are reflective of production in the southeast region. Broiler production in terms of live weight has grown steadily over the last decade and is forecast to continue to grow. Value fluctuates with price changes but are currently high. Egg and turkey production have held steady. Let's take a look at poultry manure characteristics. These values are for manure as excreted. Keep in mind that poultry litter from broiler houses contains bedding. So broiler litter is a lot drier and less nutrient dense. But an important characteristic of poultry manure is the nitrogen to phosphorus ratio. We see that the NP ratio is 3.5, and that ratio doesn't change much when bedding is added. Crop demand is 10 units of nitrogen for every one unit of phosphorus. So if you apply sufficient poultry litter to meet crop demand for nitrogen, you are applying three times what the crop needs for phosphorus. Historically, that is exactly what has been happening until today, a lot of soils that have received poultry litter have excessively high levels of phosphorus. At very high levels of soil P, phosphorus can be lost in dissolved form in runoff and in leachate that goes to tile drains. That leads to nutrient enrichment and eutrophication of surface waters. So phosphorus is the primary nutrient of concern from an environmental standpoint. These maps show amounts of poultry manure phosphorus and nitrogen by county across the continental U.S. There is significant poultry production in the Northeast, Upper Midwest, and on the West Coast, but the Southeast really stands out in terms of density of poultry production. In this slide, we see that there is significant turkey production in the Carolinas, and the Southeast has its share of egg production, but broilers dominate poultry production across the Southeast. The previous slides showed manure nutrient source areas. Here we see phosphorus sources coupled with sink areas in what we are calling the mega manure shed that is the southeast. Through manure shed analysis, we have identified cropland that can receive nutrients from these source areas in order to meet demand based on crop removal. Counties in the lighter shades are the sinks for excess manure nutrients from the darker shaded source counties. Except for a few counties shown in white, which either do not have significant cropland, those may be urban areas or forested areas, or these counties are candidates for inter-county transfers. 
they have manure nutrients sufficient to meet crop demand if the nutrients are moved around within county, but cannot accept additional nutrients from outside source areas. As a result of this analysis, we see nutrient saturation from southern Pennsylvania, Delaware, and Maryland all the way to the Mississippi River. West of the Mississippi, source areas in northeast Arkansas meet nutrient needs eastward to the Mississippi River and westward into Oklahoma and East Texas. But the Mississippi River is a natural barrier to transporting manure, so we end our analysis there. Furthermore, this blue area in the Carolinas is an area of concentrated swine production. We do not show any sink areas associated with sources of phosphorus from swine production. If we did allocate sink areas to receive nutrients from swine production, this large contiguous area would be even larger. But I'll call your attention to the Southern Piedmont shown in green and the Shenandoah shown in red. In this table, we show the maximum distance that manure would have to be transported in order to move nutrients from source areas to sink areas, summarized by sub-manure sheds. To move manure from sources to sinks, some manure would have to be transported 105 kilometers in the southern Piedmont and 235 kilometers in the Shenandoah. This doesn't seem practical, so we conclude that manure transport alone is not sufficient for sustaining poultry production in the southeast. This conclusion is based on conservative estimates. There is a recent study by Robert Sabo and co-authors from the EPA that estimates excess soil P levels in the U.S. Although soil test P data are not generally available, this analysis that looked at historical phosphorus application shows that there is a high probability of soils with excessively high soil P levels such that no phosphorus addition is recommended. Instead of applying phosphorus to meet crop removal, these soils should be managed with no phosphorus addition so that soil P levels could be reduced. So that brings us to the question of what can be done to sustain the poultry industry in the mega manure shed. We need alternative technologies for managing excess manure nutrients. One technology that is already in use is improved feeds. By adding the phytase enzyme to poultry feed, phosphorus that is bound to phytate and cannot be digested by poultry can be made available unless total phosphorus is needed in feed to provide a balanced diet. Less phosphorus in, less phosphorus out. However, some research shows that phytase enzyme may also make manure phosphorus more easily dissolved and susceptible to loss and runoff. So land applied manure from phytase treated feed should be carefully managed. Incineration is another option. Nitrogen is lost by combustion, but phosphorus ends up in the ash. That nutrient rich ash may be used as a much more nutrient dense fertilizer that can be transported farther and more efficiently. But as we saw with phytase enzyme treated feed, manure nutrient management te technologies have pluses and minuses. As we saw previously, there is significant turkey production in the Carolinas, and North Carolina authorized construction of three poultry manure incineration facilities to help manage the issue of excess nutrients. Since construction, some of these facilities have been shut down, at least temporarily, due to concerns over toxicity of emissions. Poultry litter can be gasified using a fluidized bed gasifier. The gas can then be used to power a gas engine for power generation. The gasifiers also produce ash and slag, which contain the phosphorus and other nutrients, such as potassium. The challenge becomes one of finding an appropriate beneficial way to process the ash and recycle those nutrients. Pyrolysis is a controlled burn in an oxygen-limited environment that produces several byproducts, bio-crude oil, biochar, wood vinegar, and synthetic gas all have several beneficial uses. This mobile pyrolysis plant was developed by scientists at Virginia Tech 
for use in treating poultry litter at multiple poultry production facilities. The Pyrotech Energy Company licenses the technology, provides equipment, engineering support, and service to the waste to energy industries. Composting and then pelletizing poultry manure reduces volume, thereby increasing nutrient density, provides for easier handling, and reduces odor so it can be applied in parks and other areas where raw poultry litter could not be used. Purdue, one of the large poultry integrators, ran a composting and pelletizing plant on the Delmarva Peninsula for several years, but it was never profitable. Bedding, sand, and other impurities in the litter wore out the screens in the pelletizer. Frequent replacement of the screens drove up the cost. However, the pelletized product was shipped great distances to where nutrient surplus was not a problem. There are several pelletizing plants operating in the U.S. and more are being built. We haven't said much about layer manure, but layers are not usually raised on bedding, therefore the manure is relatively free of impurities. The screens last longer, so the cost of pelletizing is lower. Composting alone also has benefits and is done both in and outside of the poultry house. Volume and odor are reduced, pathogens and weed seeds are destroyed, and composted litter can be reused for bedding. That is an important benefit because bedding in the form of wood chips is limited or prohibitively expensive in some places. Purdue ceased their pelletizing operation but continued to operate as a composting facility. I imagine most of you are familiar with anaerobic digestion, especially in conjunction with liquid dairy or swine manure management. Anaerobic digestion of poultry manure is possible, but it is not a good option because water must be added to the relatively dry poultry manure. However, as with the case of swine production in North Carolina that overlaps with poultry production, the sum total of nitrogen and phosphorus from animal production has to be managed relative to the capacity of surrounding cropping areas to sustainably use those nutrients. So anaerob anaerobic digestion is a viable option for treating swine and liquid dairy manure such that those nutrients do not compete with options for managing poultry manure. Finally, the Manure Phosphorus Extraction System, MAFEX, is a filtration technology for liquid dairy and swine manures. Again, the objective is to manage those nutrient surpluses in ways that do not compete with more viable land application options for poultry manure. In summary, poultry production in the Southeast is the largest manure shed in the U.S a mega manure shed, if you will. Dry poultry litter lends itself to transport over relatively large distances compared to liquid manures. Manure treatment can increase the value of poultry manure as a nutrient source or other beneficial product. Vertical integration of the U.S. poultry industry offers advantages for manure management. The large integrators have major influence over production and can promote more sustainable production practices as evidenced by Purdue and other efforts within the industry. In closing, I thank you for your participation in this session. Thank you.